Hey, what's going on? It's Glendon Cameron, another video. Be sure to subscribe to my Hustling University email list for some killer offers. There's always something going on in the AQ. Now to the video. Eighty yards in fifty seconds. Don't know if you watched the Detroit Lions play the Dallas Cowboys. I sat there and I watched that whole game. My spotty sense went off because it was one of those games where you know if you went to the bathroom or something you missed something. And it was at the end after uh, Des Bryant did his monster move. Something said, stay. It's 50 seconds. They're on their 20. Possible, not possible. So I watch it. They get down the field. He almost gets in the end zone. And the thing that got me was Matthew Stafford. And no, I'm not going to say I knew what he was going to do. I had no clue. But that's the hustler mindset. I mean, seriously, you, you're seeing this more and more that you cannot leave a minute on the clock. It doesn't matter if they're at their own end zone. What the uh, what the the way these guys are playing. It doesn't matter. And I looked at that. Detroit Lions had four turnovers. And they weren't just like regular turnovers. They were red zone turnovers, costly turnovers. Just anytime they were getting ready to do something. They turned the ball over. It was crazy. But another thing, reason I was watching the game was, other than the turnovers, Detroit was kicking Dallas's ass. And I was like, damn, this is just crazy. In the last second, when he did his thing, he knew what he was going to do. No one else did. And he totally faked it out. And I looked at it. This is very easy to money for the quarterback, but, hey, 12 seconds. So many things can happen. Running, play. Too many things can happen where the time would just go out. I mean, it's odd, but the best that was the best thing to do. I mean, trickeration. It, it's just crazy. It was an amazing athletic performance yesterday by the Detroit Lions because now they, they're, they've won more games this year than they did all last year. They won four. Now they're up in five. And they're going to win more because when you see somebody that just says, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. When they say, you know what, don't care what's going on, we're going to fight until the whistle blows, a lot of good stuff can happen. And what I want to talk to you about this morning is mental fatigue. There are many times that, you know, you're in a bad situation. You're in a really, really bad situation. And the mental fatigue takes over. And it's the worst possible thing to happen to you because you're shutting down parts of your brain that you need. Your attitude is just in the toilet. And you're giving up hope. It is so easy to give up hope. And this is one of the reasons I love sports. Because... When you are down and out, when you've just literally made so many mistakes, you've had your ass handed to you, when you summon up the will to keep fighting to the very last minute and then end up winning, it's a serious, it's a serious moment. It's a salient lesson on life. 50 seconds. Totally flipped around the game. Now, if you don't know what the hustler mindset is, I'm going to break it down for you so it's forever broken down. There's many people that want to like go out and hustle from a hip-hop, gangster, in-the-hood type posture. That's not what my hustler mindset's about. My hustler mindset is about exploiting opportunities for resources, whatever they may be. Now, Maddie Stafford, he exploited everyone's perception. He sold the hell out of that spike. We're going to spike. Let's run. And I mean, just for the situation, perfect move, perfect call. 
you got to give the guy mad props and just you got to think about this you really got to think about this dude threw interceptions and that's why I like to talk about quarterbacks in the hustler mindset you just fucked up and you have to mentally get your mind right and go out and do the very thing that you just fucked up and do it correctly and sometimes people get what I call just the uh, humbug you start throwing uh, interceptions and all of a sudden it's like I'm not going to throw an interception if you know uh, if you're part of Hustle University and you've been to that session you know about narratives thought processes and they get that loop and the next thing you know they're throwing the interceptions all over the place Detroit Lions, four turnovers. They never stopped fighting. The math was against them. The math was totally against them. You turn the ball over four times in the game, 99.8% of the time you're going to lose. But that's the hustler mindset. It doesn't matter what the statistics are. It doesn't matter what happened before that last play because you don't put a team away, and that's Dallas's problem. You know, I always call them the Dallas Cowgirls. And, you know, hats off to Tony Romo. He's a great quarterback. But they don't have that killer instinct. When you have someone on the ropes, you're supposed to keep slugging until they hit the uh, bat. And they don't do that. They just don't finish games. And you look at other teams who don't have the level of talent that they have, they finish the game. It's kind of spooky when you think about it. But with the hustler mindset, you were really, really, really trying to facilitate your desires. You cannot become mentally fatigued. And it's very easy, it's very simple to fall prey to those feelings because you're so powerful. When you're an ass out, down and out, things are going bad, it's really, really easy for you to just say, fuck it. This is how it's going to be. This is what it's going to be. And I'll just roll with it. And perhaps I might summon up enough courage to fight another day. The problem with that line of thinking is you are not stretching your perception. You're not stretching yourself. Because I've been in a lot of messed up situations due to some really bad decisions. And I had to deal with things. I had to deal with things. And what happens when you deal with things, you develop new resources. You develop a different way of looking at life. You develop the hustler's mindset. You start looking at situations as opportunities. When you look at a bad situation and you go, whoa, it's me. I'm fucked. Or you start, if you're very religious, oh God, why have you forsaken me? If you get into that mindset, you are essentially taking a screwdriver and sticking it into your mental fuel tank several times. Each time you say one of those things, you leak out more fuel. So you're already in a bad situation. You already have all this stuff going on. And then you hamstring yourself by reducing your resources. What you think about is what you become. What you focus on the most is what will happen. So when you do this stuff, you put yourself in a worse situation because I don't get headaches. It's rare. I mean, if I get a headache, it's something, um, it's, it's just a really, really rare event. And one of the reasons it came from fear. The reason I don't get headaches is something that came from fear. As a child, back in the, you know, BC, before cable, we had these big ass pills. I mean, they were huge. Big old pills, and you had to swallow them, and they hurt when they went down your throat. And I didn't want to take those pills. And I remember telling my mom, I don't get headaches. And I told her in a very excited, very frantic, fear-based state, I don't get headaches. And this went on for, you know, quite a while. And I realized throughout my life, I don't get headaches. 
I program myself not to get headaches based on fear. So understand, a bad situation, there was fear, there was all kinds of uh, things going on with me mentally, but when you learn how to, in the midst of chaos, do something like that, use that energy, use that those fears, that negative energy to transfer to a positive outcome because I look back and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. You know, I know people who are plagued with migraines, folks who get headaches all the time. It is a wonderful thing to not get headaches. It's awesome. Now, what you can do when your back's against the wall, there's, you know, 80 yards, 50 seconds. You can start thinking because if you look at that game, all the turnovers, and the fact, you know, and, oh, Megatron, good lord. And that's one of the probably the classiest football players I've ever seen in my life next to Jerry Rice. Dude is just, he oozes class. I mean, it's just coming from his pores. And total team player. But you look at that, and made all those mistakes, all those things that happen, and they never stop fighting. That's what you have to do in your life. I know people who are right now in a bad situation because it's about to happen. People are starting to get laid off. Chase Bank just laid 1,200 people off in the mortgage department. Kind of a nod to the housing recovery is not coming like people think. It's very segmented, and it was driven by investors buying huge blocks of houses for investments. So for the investment portfolio. So don't, don't really think that it's back. We live in a time where there is segmented success, and it's, it's just... It's awesome if you are mentally prepared for it, and it's totally fucked up if you are in the back seat and you don't know what's going on. You're not driving the car. The car is driving itself. It's totally the uh, tail is wagging the dog. If you're in that situation, these are the worst of times. But understand, when you're, when you're in that situation, you have to look at it as an opportunity to grow. You have to look at it as an opportunity to get better because if you look at it as damnation, punishment, all of these horrible things, and they may be, they very well may be, but I have learned much experience with this, that when you do not give up, what can happen in the 50 seconds before the clock expires can blow your mind. I am telling you, there have been experiences where all types of jacked up stuff happened to me. I share one of them. It was the early years of eBay. I got some stuff out of a unit and I didn't know it was defective. I had no clue, you know, it, it looked good when we used it, but it had some problems and we sold a lot of them. Got totally, totally roasted. Feedback. All kinds of stuff. I mean, people were like, don't buy from this seller. Don't do this. Don't do that. And it was not a happy day in the village. It was not. It was It was pretty messed up. Any way you look at it. It was pretty freaking messed up. So, it was crazy how bad it got. I mean, seriously, it it was um, it was a bad situation. It was a very very bad situation, and you know those were like some of the first negatives, and that was like a block of red, and you know that was like the kiss of death back then. So we had sold a lot of stuff on eBay, and we had that batch. But we had sold so much stuff that within, I mean, literally two days, it was on page three, four, five. That was just like, whoa. And the thing is, our sales didn't impact it because 
when we saw all that negative stuff, you know, we run refunded people's money. We didn't worry about them shipping it back. But we didn't stop. You know, we, we didn't stop. We didn't go, oh, hell, let's just scrap this account. We just kept going on. And within about 90 days, the percentage went back to where it was. We were still selling. And I learned that people would buy from folks because, I mean, we got plummeted down to like 90%, 89, 90%. And like, like I said, 90 days went back up to 99 point some percent because the more you sell, the more feedback you get, you push that stuff down through the ratios. But it was a freak out moment because, you know, eBay was like, oh God, my eBay's jacked up. There no one's going to buy from us. And when panic and stuff set in, you know, part of it's like, we got all this stuff that's up there. We just, we just kept listing. We, in fact, we listed more because it was just like, hey, you know, if we can get past this, just list more, put better deals up. And the thing is, when all this stuff is going down, you cannot give up. You cannot. And this is not to say that you are going to always succeed. You're going to fail. But if you do not let failure define you, or you get to the point where it's like, oh my God, I just can't go on. Then you haven't failed. You've died. Something in you has just died. And you're just like, fuck it. Can't do it no more. And then you start to get that very life that you feared that was coming. Because you bring it on because that's the total sum of your thoughts. All right, this is Glenn and Cameron. I'll see you on the good side.